Worldwide self-quarantines have resulted in creativity in captivity, with art lovers recreating favorite works of art from objects in their homes. The Worcester Art Museum has a delicious twist on all of this, challenging patrons to create edible works of art from the museum's own collection. Claire Whitner, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jared, for having me. You are a curator at the Worcester Art Museum, and now you've turned to food as a way of engaging in art. How did that happen? I had noticed that other institutions were inviting people to recreate paintings in their homes with the props they could find around their houses, and I was really enjoying those on social media. But then I also noticed there was this whole other stream of uh, various posts from friends who were baking with great intensity. And I thought, well, can we not merge these events? Can we not have people interpreting works of art from the Worcester Art Museum in baked goods or even food? You know, we can speak, think more broadly. So that really was the inspiration for Edible Wham. Well, how's that working out for you so far? Well, right now it's just staff. <laughs> I'm unaware of any visitors working on these projects. And since this was my grand idea, I felt that I had to have a go at it. My first project was to try to realize some of our ancient Egyptian jewelry pieces in cookie form. Uh, for some reason, I thought this was going to be easy, and instead it ended up being this like eight-hour odyssey in which I was entirely covered in blue and green frosting. Well, well, tell me about that piece that you made, because when I was looking at it, of course, I would have no idea of the, the havoc you, you may have wrought in your own home, but it looked pretty good. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate that. It is a photogenic cookie. I have to say in person, it was not as attractive. So our Egyptian jewelry collection has been on my mind. And I thought a scarab, a scarab is a pretty easy shape. And since I don't have any cookie cutters, I felt like I had to draw one. So I made a little, um, I freehand drew the shape pretty simple. I had this great idea that I was going to frost the cookie and then make some sort of really dark food coloring to make the details that was truly an epic fail so instead after i showed that to my husband and he shook his head and said mm, <laughs> no that doesn't that does not look like a scarab i i went in with a fork dug it all out and then i started trying to apply the food coloring directly into the crevices which made for a better effect but really what worked was that um, when I took a picture, it kind of hid a lot of the issues with the cookie. So it really is a much more photogenic image than, than what we had. It's pretty well, yeah, exciting. Give us a sense of the, the range of what you've seen come out of this. And it's everything from antiquities to more contemporary art. Oh, yeah. Edible Wham spans millennia. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> one of the great efforts was put together by our curatorial assistant in prints, drawings, and photographs, Lauren Sumita. She had some failed brioche dough in her refrigerator from some sort of baking attempt on Easter. And she thought that that would be the perfect way to attempt to realize a Greek mask that we have in the collection. It's this votive miniature mask. Uh, she felt that with the dough, with this, kind of, this brioche dough, she could get a patina that was similar to the terracotta for the miniature mask. Uh, and I have to say, the results are fantastic. And I asked her if she then proceeded to eat it, because we definitely ate our scarab <laughs> cookie. Uh, she said, no, no, they decided that eating a face was just not going to work for the family. Well, to, to um, get into yeah. some of the more contemporary art, is it? You know, I don't want to. I don't want to criticize someone, but is it is it a little cheating? Is it a little entry level to try to do somebody like Joseph Albers in his homage to the square? Uh, n no, because I think that's a practical minded person that chooses minimalism. <laughs> there are just many ways into that edible art. And you, but, you and I, one, one of my favorite subjects, cheese. Yes, that was a really fantastic submission from our curator of American art, Erin Corrales Diaz. And I thought that her Cheeseworth Kelly, which is a take on our orange white Ellsworth Kelly from 1961, was truly inspired because she had already gone grocery shopping at Costco with her husband and they had purchased a mild cheddar. And she said she was pondering the groceries in her fridge and saw that there was a certain resonance between the orange of the mild cheddar and the Ellsworth Kelly. And 
you know, Cheeseworth Kelly was born. Well, let me ask you, so this is more than simply about trying to destroy yourself in the kitchen, but this is <laughs> this is engagement, and it also has great tradition with it, going back to the 1700s, I read. What is fun for us, I think, is it makes us think about our collection in a totally different way. It makes us think about the materiality of these pieces. It's very humbling because we're just trying to make, recreate these works of art in very basic materials. Has thinking about it in the context of food given you, given you new awareness, new understanding of that collection? It's stressful to be living through this time and that we spend all day in Zoom meetings and emailing and the opportunity to just kind of step away from that and to take part in the joy that is art and humanity and all of the wonderful things that we make, either in earnestness, you know, out of real materials or out of silliness when we're making things out of failed dough. I don't know, I think for me, it just the moment to kind of have a little levity is so important right now. But you know, you're on Open Studio now, it's just a short hop to Jimmy Fallon with this. I have, I have like <laughs> sneaking suspicions. I really would love to see what Jimmy Fallon could make out of dough in his kitchen that relates to the Worcester Art Museum. Actually, Jared, I would love to see what you could make in your kitchen that relates to the Worcester Art Museum's collection. I will tell and, you, you know, I was, I'll tell you, I'll just tell you from where my studio is now. I'm looking at my kitchen. I don't think I could even tell you where the oven is, so that I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> You know, don't limit yourself. What could you do with a mild cheddar cheese? <laughs> There's so many <laughs> options. <laughs> well, Claire Winter, it's such a pleasure to speak with you, and I look forward to seeing you again in person at the museum someday soon. Thanks, me too. Thanks a lot, Jared. These adaptations are also a class act, at least in Leicester, where middle school teacher Laura Dusty has inspired students and staff alike to recreate Worcester Art Museum objects from any manner of things in their homes, including the very valuable toilet paper. Laura Dusty, thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Now tell me about how you launched into this project for yourself and what you first recreated. I presented this idea to our librarian to do the artwork recreation, and she was the one that mentioned having it be exclusively from the Worcester Art Museum collection, which is just, you know, what a great opportunity to do that. And Winslow Homer is what drew your attention. That's the painting that I decided to recreate. What was it about, I, I know you've grown up with it, but what was it about that Homer painting um, that, that that was the first one you went right to? Honestly, I love the mood of it. Um, I love the, the gesture, the movement with the waves, um, the resiliency of the woman standing there. Um, it <laughs> just seems very New England to me. A couple of others that really caught my attention. There was one of an Assyrian relief. Tell me about that, which there seems to be a lot of structure involved there, a lot of architecture. That work of art was recreated by um, one of my coworkers who is a history teacher. She loves ancient art, um, so naturally she was drawn to that. Um, and the way that re she recreated is just hilarious. She um, captured that monochromatic tone with the clothing that she was wearing. Um, and she had her engineer husband kind of work on the winged part of that work of art. Um, it's actually a dining room chair where the legs have been taken off. And it's kind of just sort of perched against her back and <laughs> balancing on the couch. So um, I just was blown away as to how she interpreted that. The other piece I think that is getting a lot of conversation, and maybe it's because this is getting a lot of conversation anyway, but the use of toilet paper in one of the pieces. Tammy Ribello, our secretary, was specifically looking for a work of art where she could incorporate that and kind of send a message to everyone saying how much she missed the kids and uh, the staff at, at school. So <laughs> that was kind of funny. Well, what what does this do for education, especially at a time when kids are home, they can't go directly into the museum. How do you find it helps this, this period of self-quarantine? Students are looking at the collection, so they're becoming familiar with that. Um, they're building a connection with the specific work of art. They're thinking about composition. Um, they're being introduced to color theory, um, technique, there's a lot of positives that they can get 
by integrating themselves into the artwork. And I can't imagine that anyone that participated doesn't at some point want to see that work of art in person now that they have a relationship with it. Actually, thinking about Homer, we'll have to find ways to socially distance recreate on the beach. I look forward to seeing what continues to come out uh, from your project. Congratulations on what you've done. Thank you so much.